Crystal Boy, one of my favourite characters in the entirety of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. There wasn't necessarily a demand for a video about him, but with how important of a character he is in GX, I think it's high time he got a video of his own. By the way, I know I did dub names for the Chaz video, but we're going back to sub names again because I don't know who the fuck Jesse is. Howdy do, boys! Jesse! Then he just plum collapsed! Johan Anderson is his real name, and the reason it sounds so foreign is because he's actually from Scandinavia. Scandinavia, not Texas like the dub would have you believe. He comes from Dual Academia's sister school in the North, which four kids I think actually mistranslated and called it North Academy. So to clear up that confusion, Johan isn't from North Academy, which is the school Manjome went to, but Dual Academy is Northern School. We good on that? Alright. Johan is the owner of the Notorious Crystal Beast deck, one of the coolest decks in GX and one of the funnest to watch during duels. In this series, Manjome explains to us that the Crystal Beasts are one of a kind, since they were created by Pegasus after finding Julius Caesar's lost ship with seven treasured gemstones on board. In fact, both Johan and the Crystal Beasts are so impressive that even Ed took a break from the pro leagues just because he heard Johan was a duel academy. -er. A lot of people seem to forget this, but Johan is kind of a really big deal. Especially considering he not only has some of the rarest cards in the Yu-Gi-Oh world, but Pegasus claims he's one of the top 5 best duelists in the world, even before the Crystal Beasts. He even ranked him 4th best, above Ed. It honestly shocks me Johan didn't have a storm of fans chasing him everywhere in Duel Academy. -er. I mean, it says enough that THE Ed Phoenix thinks Johan is worth his time. Immediately Johan is introduced to us as Judai's equal, not just as a duelist but as a person overall. The fact we first meet him through his dual monster spirit, Ruby Carbuncle, and with how Johan points out winged Karibo almost straight away, it's obvious we're meant to interpret Johan as being Judai's counterpart. Judai himself recognises this upon their meeting, surprised he can see winged Karibo and immediately bonding with Johan over being able to see spirits. Judai has never met someone like this before, yet their shared ability already has a feeling of familiarity with Johan's presence. And I bet many of you are asking this exactly exact question. What about Manjome Thunder? He can see spirits too, right? So how come he's not considered Judai's equal? Well, as I said in my Manjome video, he was nearly Judai's equal. Obviously, unlike Johan, Manjome couldn't see spirits all his life and feels he has to cope with it. Manjome also makes a point of trying not to talk to his spirits in public, hence why he gets so angry when they pop out at random times. Johan though, he proudly talks to his spirits at any time, similar to Judai, with both both of them uncaring of how they look to those around them. Manjame also doesn't exactly make seeing spirits part of his character, I guess. For him, it's just something he can do, but for Johan, it's a big part of his life, evident with how he calls the Crystal Beast his family. And that makes Judai go, holy shit, this guy is really cool actually. And of course, these two are equal in dueling too, and once again, the show makes this very obvious with how everyone reacts to the duel. But I wouldn't say Johan and Judai are equals through and through, and the reason for that is because I'd say we're meant to see Johan as Judai's better half. I don't mean that in a negative way towards Judai by the way, but that reason is why Johan is the one character to push Judai's character development through the roof. During the first half of Season 3, Professor Cobra, our cartoon villain, is attempting to revive his son through evil means and has an unofficial contract with Yubel. Judai feels he has to deal with it but here's the important part. He thinks he needs to deal with it, because who else will? At this point, Judai has been the one person to deal with every catastrophe Duel Academy has been thrown into, and because of that, he's been assigned by those around him to fix everyone's problems. If you think I'm wrong in saying this, watch through GX again and pay attention to how his friend group actually treat him. They mean no harm in it, but their reliance on Judai isn't great. Then Johan comes in and is shown as one of the most self-reliant characters in the show. An important scene to note is when the spirit hunter captures Sapphire Pegasus and Johan basically tells Judai he'll deal with it. And Judai tells him to wait before being able to finish his sentence due to exhaustion. Judai believes he himself needs to fix everyone's problems, to the point where he clearly experiences a form of anxiety by letting someone else deal with their own problem. There's obvious panic from letting Johan run off by himself and this is also due to his worry of his friends getting hurt while dueling, which was both foreshadowed and explored in Season 1. 
The problem is, during Johan's duel, the spirit hunter threatens to kill a spirit and leaves Johan in a tough spot. He prays for a miracle and Judai swings in, but what's important to note here is he helped Johan out of admiration, not because he felt obligated to. Where have I come up with this idea? Well, during the conversation before Johan's duel, Johan tells Judai why he duels. Johan's dream is to bridge the gap between the duel monster spirit world and the human world, because he wants everyone to know there's life in their cards and to treat them with love and respect. He wants the spirits to be safe and for humans to live in harmony with them. And Judai very clearly has nothing but adoration for Johan after that. Whoops, did I say adoration? I meant admiration. Sort of. Throughout season 3, Judai mentions a few times how great he thinks Johan's dream is. And can I just point out, Johan immediately recognized something was wrong with Judai by him asking a simple question. He's only known Judai for maybe a week at this point, and already he can read Judai better than most of his friends can, Jesus Christ. So from this, we can see Johan has a reason for why he duels, and his reason is not only admirable, but something Judai wishes he had. That alone can make a good enough argument for why Johan is Judai's better half. But there's more to it than that. When Dual Academia is sent to another dimension thanks to Yubel, there's chaos among the students due to not having enough food. Johan, the chad he is, steps up and takes charge by telling everyone to sit down and shut up because that's the best way to handle things. So what is this showing us? That Johan's a natural leader, someone who can easily step up and take charge and he does it because he wants to. Judai, on the other hand, never wanted to be a leader, nor someone heavily relied upon. And it was an obvious relief to him that he now has someone in his life that hangs around because they simply enjoy his company. With that we can see Johan has two things Judai doesn't have, a reason to duel and the will of leadership. Both things Judai has mad respect for and what ultimately makes Johan a better Judai, so to speak. But again, I don't mean that in a negative way. So now that we've broken down who Johan is compared to Judai, why does that make him so important? And why does he boost Judai's character development? Well, for one, Johan acts as a form of stability for Judai, calming him down in tense situations, but also helping Judai to reassure himself. And because Judai has such a heavy respect for Johan, his words actually hold a lot more more meaning than anyone else at this point in the series. During Judai's duel with Cobra, he starts slipping because he realizes he has no reason to duel. A stupid sounding reason out of context, but when you're versing a man who wants his dead son back while you're just dueling for the fun of it, that shit can get to a person. Judai looks like he's about to have a full blown panic attack until the savior Johan cuts in to call him an idiot for even thinking he had nothing he was dueling for. Johan literally says, you always bear everyone's expectations on your shoulders. Basically telling Judai exactly what he needed to hear in that moment. I also find it interesting Johan was the one to speak up and say all this right after Cobra says, right now you have nothing to support you. <laughs> to my face, you limp noodle! Johan is quite literally Judai's stability, and the show is making a point of it. Then, during the duel between Judai, Yubel, and Johan, Yubel sends out the three phantasm cards to which Judai freaks out about. Johan, though, bless his heart, literally laughs in the face of them and tells Judai it's exciting, which immediately calms him down. O'Brien even makes a point of wondering how Johan can be excited in a life-threatening duel. But here's the thing, Johan isn't oblivious. He's not like Judai in season 1, who had fun with almost every duel, even in situations that should have been taken seriously. Johan knows full well this is a dangerous situation, and he knows even more that Judai could break under the pressure. He's not laughing in the face of these powerful monsters because he's an idiot. He's doing it because he knows his confidence is what Judai needs in that moment. If you don't believe me, Johan says he'll protect Judai, even if it takes everything he has. Yubel even says, just by seeing Johan, Judai is rejuvenated. I need to really elaborate here. This isn't shipping propaganda. All of this happens and is said in the original version. If you're angry at me for that, then take it directly to Junkie Takigami, who apparently wrote the GX anime and quite a few Naruto movies. Oh my god, it all makes sense now. It's obvious that Johan has become Judai's pillar to lean on, something Judai's never had throughout the entirety of the GX series. Seriously, rewatch it and find one for me, because I can't. The closest he got was probably Neos, 
but when it comes to actual people, it is absolutely Johan. I also just discovered this and I grabbed my mic back out to mention this. They changed the openings of season 3 ever so slightly to change it from Judai looking distant with Johan behind him to show Judai suddenly looking confident and smiling with Johan behind him not long after he's met him in the show. This is literally showing Johan is Judai's reassurance. Like they touched up the opening just to do this. Come on. I'm sure you're asking, well, where's the character development in all of this? It's simple. You have a character one character really likes and can really depend on and all you do is take them away. Johan, as many of us know, vanishes along with Yubel after their duel. Combine losing a beloved best friend along with thinking you're the reason they're gone and you'll find yourself growing up very quickly in a tragic way. This is the first time we see Judai so distressed and I mean really distressed to the point he becomes absolutely selfish and illogical. But not illogical like in season 1, illogical like in a less wholesome, more damaging way. It was evident throughout all of GX that Judai had a lot of growing up to do, and it was also evident Judai needed to start considering others' feelings. I say this because Judai was somewhat socially inept, acting like a stupid kid at some points and straight up not knowing or understanding what to do or say in situations sometimes. But hey, that's what happens when you grow up with no friends because of a demon card and have parents that fry your fucking brain. While Johan wasn't the first person Judai actually thought about emotion wise, Manjome gets that one, Johan was definitely the first person Judai could really understand and have proper conversations with. In short, that means Judai doesn't actually have to think when talking to Johan because he just gets him. Everyone else seems to confuse Judai to an extent, but that's okay, it's not his fault. So Johan's disappearance really made Judai grow up and consider his situation. I have never seen him fight harder or panic more than when being thrown into the hell dimension to desperately find Johan. In saying that, Judai encountered the problem of considering one person above the rest, which means he became undoubtedly selfish in his quest to find Johan and left everyone else behind. That was just another lesson he had to learn, but with his friends being sacrificed and dying before his eyes, he certainly learned that one the hard way. It was heartbreaking watching Judai fight to get Johan back, being so desperate to the point that he flat out refused to believe Johan was dead. I mean, in his defense, he wasn't, but Judai didn't know that. It was after Judai's duel with Bronn that we're met with the biggest change in his character, which is becoming the Supreme King, and yes, Johan was the reason for that to happen. Yes, Judai's other friends played a part in it, but discovering Johan to be dead was the breaking point. The show even tells you that, with not only Ed confirming it, but O'Brien confirming it too. In fact, they're so well aware of it that O'Brien sends out a search party in an attempt to find Johan so they can revert Judai back to his original self. Sadly, they don't actually find Johan, but just get told someone has seen Johan. And when O'Brien tells the Supreme King that Johan's alive, we get a slight response from an emotionally broken, barred off Judai. Here's the part that's always interested me. We look inside Judai's head and see the faces of his friends in glass around him. One at a time they all break because he believes them to all be dead and has ultimately given up on them. But Johan is nowhere to be seen in here. My two reasons for this is he either hasn't given up on Johan yet, still refusing to accept his death, hence why we don't see him shatter, or the Supreme King has pushed Johan out of his heart completely, causing him to hopefully forget about him because it's either less painful to forget him or Johan acts as an actual threat to bury the Supreme King back down. But those are just theories and for all we know the animators just forgot to put Johan in there. Oops. When Judai is finally back to his normal self, he continues to search for Johan after hearing he's alive. Johan literally being his final hope and I can quite confidently say his only reason for living. It's really painstakingly obvious that Judai just wants to die. Like he really just wants to die. But when he sees Johan for the first time in forever and the look of absolute relief washes over Judai's face, it's relieving for us too because Judai's reason for still living is thankfully still alive. Now, this is important to understand. Think about Judai at the start of Season 3. Now think about him at the end of Season 3. He has become a nearly completely different character, right? Literally all of that. 
or nearly all of that, is because of Johan. Junai wouldn't be more mature nor more heartbroken if it wasn't for Johan. I'm sure many are saying, but it could have been anyone. It could have been Asuka or Sho, and he would have responded in the same way. And to that I say, no he wouldn't. This is why them being equals and Johan being Judai's support is so important and was so quickly established. Yes, Judai would be distressed if he lost Asuka or Sho or anyone else, but he wouldn't have acted so irrationally about it. And he definitely wouldn't have unleashed the Supreme King because of them. When Judai found out Johan was dead, that was his only reassurance gone. And he also thought Johan was dead because of him. Judai quite literally broke due to Johan's thought to be death. And that level of trauma he experienced was more than we've ever seen before in the show. <laughs> it was important for Judai to break emotionally, in one way or another, because a broken character rebuilding themselves is what character development usually is. And with Johan being introduced, Judai finally had something to break him down beyond repair. Throughout Judai's duel with Yubel, we finally get something told to us that was obvious throughout the entire second half of season 3, but is now so prominent it's impossible to miss. Judai finally has a reason to duel. And his reason is Johan. Yes, I said it, but it's true. Throughout the entirety of season 3 and even before that, Judai was worried because he had no real reason to duel. Or at least, a reason he knew of. So what do the writers do? They make the one person Judai admires for dueling become Judai's own reason for dueling. It's fucking mwah. It may be just a kid show to many of you, but god does GX do it so well sometimes. I genuinely do not know how anyone can debate this, especially considering Judai says things like, I came here to take Johan back, and Johan I will recover you with my own hands. He also just says his name, just says Johan a bunch of times throughout the duel, as you do. Johan. 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 I mean, the thing is, if you debate that point, which I am open to, you're kind of clutching at straws. It ultimately all comes back to Johan. Everything during the second half of season 3 comes back to Johan and the bond Judai has with him. In fact, that is so important, it's the reason Yubel got so pissed at him and is also the implied reason they possessed Johan in the first place. And of course, that gives us the amazing line, with the meaning constantly debated over, of Yubel asking Judai if he loves Johan more than them. Bitch! <laughs> Again, it's a real line that's said in the original. That's a pretty big question to ask when you're a demon who's been pledged eternal love by Judai, and they're just straight up asking what, so that eternal love you promised me belongs to him now? But hey, I don't know, you decide what the hell that means. Interpret it in your own way. Johan! Yeah, wait for me. Judai. Okay, just looking at this script, I can see this video was going on for way longer than I anticipated, but I think I got my point across enough. The point is, Johan Andersen is an incredibly important character in GX, and is important for our protagonist. The show even tells us that by giving us a bunch of parallel shots with Judai in the opening, and then redoes the opening during the second half of season 3 to show us Johan is the only thing Judai is thinking about. Go watch the second opening of the third season if you think I'm lying, but it is literally right there. Actually, before I end this, let me talk about the dub real quick because I feel I need to. Now, I'm sure it's obvious to some of you, but with Johan wearing frilly shirts and having an ace monster called Rainbow Dragon, it seems to me at least that 4Kids had a, uh, gay or European problem with Johan. This man is gay! I'm
This is pure speculation, but I am so sure the reason they gave Johan, or Jesse, Jesse, a Texan accent in the dub was to try and make him as masculine as they could. Because why would you think anything of the sort when the character is from one of the most conservative countries in America? For all I know, they just gave him a Texan accent because they thought it was funny. But when it comes to main characters, they usually have a reason to give them a stupid accent. An example being Joey Wheeler. The other reason I think that is because when Jesse, Jesse is possessed by Ubel and says anything about loving Jaden, they put this weird purple glow around him. What's worse is that in the end you took advantage of her feelings. You sent her to the As if saying, see kids and crazy parents, this isn't him saying these things, it's this non-binary demon that we gave a tit to and turned into a woman. Yes, they actually did that to you, Bell. What the fuck? Anyway, the dub absolutely did Johan dirty. Europe isn't allowed to exist in four kids GX apparently, so country boy it is, I guess. Why are you gay? Who says I'm gay? You get You are gay. All right, and finally I can say thanks for watching. I really meant for this to be more of a short think piece than a whole essay on Johan, but when I started writing about him, I couldn't find myself stopping, and then I just ended up admiring Johan's character a lot more. He's a fantastic character, and I would love to know what you all think of him, especially his relationship with Judai. But I just ask, try not to be cringy with it on both sides. I read the comments, I see you. Please watch the subbed version of GX. You're really missing a lot if you don't. And luckily, it's available on Crunchyroll, so go get it. See you in whatever I make next.